an epic ride just might be the best experience you can have on a mountain bike. Here are our top 10 tips for riding in the wilderness. Whilst it's important you need to take all the stuff that you might need with you, just check with your friends if you're riding in a group that you're not taking two of the same thing. Yeah, so we've planned, we know exactly what each other's carrying. For example, I know that Neil has a multi-tool that has a chain tool on it, therefore I don't need to bring my own chain tool. Right, I think we're ready, let's roll. How many tools on this ride, Neil? Two tools. How's this pace, you think? Don't know, I reckon it's a bit hot. I reckon I might need to back it off a little bit, spin an easy gear. Okay. Just remember, if there are some really steep kicks up, measure your effort a little bit because that will really limit your stamina for the day if you go too hard. Consider slower riders within your group and make sure that morally they are okay and you regroup regularly and give them rest time if they need it so you all stay together. You don't want, the last thing you want to do is lose someone or get lost. Hell's teeth, man. What sort of pace is that? Sorry. So as far as finding your way, I'm quite old fashioned. I like to stick to an OS map see exactly where I am and the best thing about it is it doesn't run out of batteries and you can always sort of find out where you are. A good gadget to go alongside this is a compass. I like the electronics so I've got a GPS and my phone. Just remember that they can run out of battery and sometimes you'll be out of phone signal. It's always a really good idea to let someone know where you'll go in and your estimated time of return. Long daylight hours which is great, it means we can stay out all day. Um, also things to consider are the temperature, the wind speed, the humidity and also don't forget that when you're climbing to higher altitudes it's definitely going to be windier and also colder so you will need to bring those extra layers to keep yourself warm. Perhaps on a fast descent you'll definitely get cold anyway. So having checked the weather before I've left, I still make precautions for a, a quick change in weather, especially out in the mountains like this. I've packed myself a spare set of gloves because cold and wet hands can limit your ability to ride and obviously a uh, windproof, waterproof jacket just in case it does turn rain and uh, you get a little bit cold. Fueling the ride properly so you don't run out of energy halfway through is really important. Take small regular bites of things, if you let yourself get hungry that's probably a little bit too late. I tend to take energy bars and gels with me when I go. They don't always agree with people's stomachs. So taking normal food can work just as well. Here I've got some bananas, a flapjack, a sandwich and some water. Just normal food really. Ride a bit more conservatively than normal. You don't want to smash your bike in the middle of nowhere and have a long walk out. But also an injury can get serious really quick. So maybe think about the adventure, and not think about riding really, really fast. It's always good to know the direction of safety, so maybe a town or a shelter if something goes bad. One of these reflective foil blankets is great if you do have an injury. Wrap it around yourself, keep warm and get out of the wind. What are you doing, Mark? Oh, well I was just having a banana, Neil. Lovely in this bag. Whilst the cotton t-shirt and jeans might be okay for the pub, they're pretty useless for riding a bike in. If you get wet either from rain or sweat, they'll stay wet and you'll get really cold. I always wear a wicking base layer and if you know it's not going to rain, a little light windproof jacket like this might be good enough, but if there's any chance, don't risk it, take a waterproof jacket. Yeah, and as the old saying goes, you definitely get what you pay for. So spend the money on decent technical clothing, It'll keep you warm and dry and you'll enjoy the ride far more. Give your bike a real thorough check over before you leave. Go over with a set of Allen keys, do a full bolt check, check your tyres for any slices or wear and also check your chain, make sure it's not too worn out. You don't want your chain snapping halfway around a big loop. I'll also check my brake pads before I leave. Sometimes if you ride somewhere where it's wet and gritty, you can wear through those brake pads really quickly. In that case, it might be worth taking a spare set. A small first aid kit is really essential if you're going out into the middle of nowhere. That will help in small emergencies, hopefully, but if it's anything more serious than that, you really need to make sure you've got a phone that's charged 
and also know the emergency code for the country you're in. It's also really handy to get some first aid knowledge, so there are some outdoor specific courses you can go on. So there's our top 10 tips for riding in the wilderness. It's always good to have a bit of a refreshing drink at the end of one of those ones. For more videos from GMBN, you can click up here for my training for enduro videos. You've got the fitness to get yourself around the big loop. And for, before you start your ride, it's probably a good idea to check this video out down here, which is check your transmission for wear. Where's your favourite epic ride, Mark? I think mine is probably Trans-Provence, that week-long stage race that I did. I kind of took it as more of an epic ride and enjoying the surroundings. Cool. Yeah, I think mine's in France as well, actually. Les Arc, I can't remember what it's called, but you take the highest lift up, way into the middle of nowhere, and they're just like a huge descent. Leave us a comment down below. What's your favourite epic ride?